Hi guys, this is FD for Sage5.tv once more back with another video and today we are going to be looking into GMX, a decentralized exchange for crypto derivatives. If you follow us, you know by now that we are trying to track the progress and the performance of perpetuals, futures and derivatives because we do believe on this channel, we do believe that it's going to be the next big thing come the next bull run. Derivatives, perpetuals and futures, trading options and so forth. So to date we've looked into to Ribbon Finance. We've also looked into another project we've just invested in, Perpetual Protocols. And today we are going to jump into GMX, a decentralized exchange for derivatives that is hosted on Arbitrum, an Ethereum layer 2 scaling solution. So GMX, what is it? Previously Gambit, GMX is a decentralized port and perpetual exchange that supports low swap fees and zero price impact trades. Trading is supported by a unique multi-asset pool that ends liquidity providers fees from market makers swap fees, leverage trading, spreads, funding fees, and liquidation, as well as asset rebalancing. Dynamic pricing is supported by Chainlink's oracles with TWAP, TWAP, TWAP pricing from leading volume DEXs. By the way, TWAP, TWAP, TWAP pricing or time-weighted average pricing is the measure of an asset's average price over a predetermined time period. TWAP trading algorithms seek to optimize a trade's average price while executing over a specified time period. Okay, that's enough about TWAPs. Let's go back to GMX, the decentralized exchange for derivatives. Trading is all done with no KYC on the GMX platform and you can connect to it directly using your Metamask wallet on the Arbitrum and Avalanche network. Users can earn up to 30% APY in protocol rewards from trading revenues if they buy and stake the GLP token, which is a basket of all tradable tokens on GMX. The GMS ecosystem uses a two-token system in GMX, the utility and governance token, and the GLP token, which is a liquidity token. Starting with the GMX token, it accrues 30% of the generated platform fees, while the GLP liquidity token accrues 70% of the platform generated fees. Staking the GMX token receives three types of rewards as follows, is crowd GMX, multiplier points, Ethereum, or Avalanche rewards. With a unique method for incentivizing and bootstrapping liquidity on its exchange, GMX stands out from its competitors. This is done via the use of GLP, the protocol's liquidity to provide a token. Minted GLP tokens must be held for a minimum of 15 minutes before they can be redeemed. So those who are playing the arbitrage game, this might not be for them. More info about the GLP mechanics can be found in the links in the description section. On Arbitrum, GLP holders can earn scrolled GMX plus 70% of platform fees in the form of Ethereum or ETH. On Avalanche, the GLP token holders can earn scrolled GMX plus 70% of platform fees in the form of AVAX, Avalanche's name coin. GLP revenue summary. Protocol revenue split 70-30 between GLP and the other protocol token GMX. In addition to getting the larger share of protocol revenues, GLP holders also get all the collateral when positions are liquidated, which leads to a fluctuating but over time growing inflow of revenue. So that is a massive incentive. Any liquidations accrue to the holders of the GLP token, which is the liquidity token for the GMX platform. With approximately 80% of GLP revenue coming from margin trading, this in indicates that GMX's profitability is most likely coming from retail degenerates or retail traders as they are commonly known. Now on to GMX tokenomics. First of all, let me just highlight something that I think is a bit sketchy. The following is what the team states with regards to the supply of the GMX token. The supply of the GMX token can be viewed on the GMX platform dashboard for those who are interested. So the team states that the increase in circulating supply will vary depending on the number of tokens that get vested and the amount of tokens used for marketing and partnership. The focus maximum supply is 13.25 million GMX tokens. Minting beyond the maximum supply of 13.25 million is controlled by a 28-day timeline. This option will only be used if more products are launched and liquidity mining is required. A governance vote will be conducted before any changes. So in other words, the team has left a back door to increasing the maximum supply as they see fit. And this idea that a governance process will determine as and when this happens, come on now. The people who vote are the ones who are likely to benefit the most from such increases. So to me, this is just a red flag. Anyway, let's jump into the tokenomics for the GMX token. Current supply with no hard cap is 8.648 million. Circulating supply 7.99 million, which is 92% of the currently available GMX token supply. In light of the sketchy tokenomics we have just highlighted, we will also present the number of holders, which has limited credibility due to the fact that anyone can create hundreds to thousands of wallets depending on what motivates them. Currently, 188,500 
1073 wallet addresses hold the GMX token with the larger holder holding over 75% of the GMX tokens available. That is 6.699 million tokens. So that is huge. And I don't care how they spin that. It's just that wallet holds quite a lot. The GMX token has a special feature called the flow price fund. This fund is denominated in Ethereum and GLP and grows in two ways. First, GMX ETH pairing liquidity is provided and owned by the protocol. The fees from this trading pair will be converted to GLP and deposited into the flow price fund. Secondly, 50% of funds received through Olympus bonds are sent to the flow price fund. The other 50% will be used for marketing. The flow price fund helps to ensure liquidity in GLP and provides a reliable stream of Ethereum rewards for those who staked GMX. So it's quite nice that you do not have that inflationary pressure being caused by printing tokens from thin air. They actually reward users with Ethereum tokens, which is great because that is what is being used for transactions. As the flow price fund grows, it can be used to buy back and ban GMX if the flow price fund to total supply of GMX is less than the market price of GMX. That's some ratio there. This results in a minimum flow price for GMX in terms of ETH and GLP. Now on to token distribution. This again is quite confusing, but here it is. 6 million GMX tokens from the XVIX, which could be a Roman numeral. If it was a Roman numeral, it would be 49. So from XVIX or 49 and Gambit migration, this is the previous incarnation of the GMX protocol platform and the associated token. 2 million GMX paired with Ethereum for liquidity on Uniswap. 2 million GMX reserved for vesting from escrowed GMX rewards. 2 million GMX token to be managed by the flow price fund. 1 million GMX tokens reserved for marketing partnerships and community developers. And finally, 250,000 GMX tokens distributed to contributors linearly over two years. Well, regarding the migration from Gambit to GMX, I think this could be the subject of a totally separate video because it's so convoluted that it requires its own time. And now for the GMX protocol value proposition. The team claimed that the GMX platform is a leader in crypto derivatives product offering space. Users can long, short, or simply swap tokens strong value accrual to GMX token holders and liquidity providers denominated in Ethereum, a non-inflationary tokenomics model. This is the one I was highlighting earlier. By this, it means GMX liquidity model, GLP, doesn't require inflationary farm and dump style token incentive, which most tokens that give incentives, they give incentives in their own token or coin. This is totally different. So credit where is due, I think this is commendable. The sheer size of the derivatives market is in orders of magnitude much greater than the sport and thus competition is immense. Crypto users make the use of derivatives in both bear markets as well as bull markets and yes, for some perspective. In 2021, there were roughly $50 trillion worth of perpetual swaps traded, almost a 6x increase from the previous year. This is referring to traditional finance, by the way, not crypto. And let us throw in some use cases while we are here as well, guys. Use cases for the GMX platform. You can stake the GMX token, so GMX holders can stake the GMX token to receive receive scroll GMX abbreviated as ESGMX multiplier points and Ethereum AVAX pair reward. The GMX token is also used for governance. Holders of the GMX token can participate in decentralized autonomous organization governance. Users or liquidity providers can earn rewards in GMX for providing liquidity to platform pools. The GLP token is the liquidity provider token of the platform. It can be minted using any of the tokens within the liquidity pool such as Ethereum, Bitcoin, and USDC. And now for some infrastructural use cases. Well, it's a decentralized exchange for derivatives. Users can also swap tokens, just straightforward swapping. The protocol offers spot trading for a handful of top cryptocurrencies and stables, namely Ethereum, Rep Bitcoin, Chainlinks Link, Uniswaps Uni, DAI, USDC, USDT, and FRAX. The GMX platform is also used for perpetual trading. Traders can long or short major tokens with up to 30x leverage. They can place market orders, limit orders, take profit orders, and stop loss orders are also available. Now, part of this exercise involves us applying our DYOR risk evaluation, and part of that involves us applying 13 elements, and some of the elements, we're going to cover them briefly. One of these elements is decentralization. Is GMX platform decentralized? 
decentralized? Well, while users can interact with the GMX DAP or platform, there's still some lingering doubts about who actually pulls the strings on the platform behind the scenes. On the one hand, we've got a team that chooses to remain anonymous, and yet we are made to believe that they are only two sides to all the activity taking place on the GMX platform. On the one hand, we have the traders, those who are shorting or longing the market, and liquidity providers on the other hand. Where is the project team in all this, and why have they chosen to remain anonymous? We'll cover that later on. This then brings the question, is the GMX platform really decentralized? So far, very little decentralization from users not requiring KYC and interacting with the protocol, including all the other actions that take place on the protocol, which all appear to be independent of any intermediary. The question mark remains, by the way. They are not resolved by the information we've come across. As far as security is concerned, the GMX contracts were audited by a BDK consulting as well as QuantStamp. It looks like all major findings were successfully resolved with only minor and informational ones either acknowledged or resolved. There is also an active bug bounty for the GMX platform on Immunify, which rewards community members when they identify potential exploits. Now on to scalability. GMX is available on Arbitrum and Avalanche, both known for their fast transactions and rapid transaction finality. Of all the fastest blockchains out there that are also secure, I think Arbitrum and Avalanche suits that bill quite perfectly. So heads off to the GMX team for their choices here. What about interoperability, the ability of the project to work across its own boundaries? The GMX platform currently works across the Ethereum network via the Arbitrum layer 2 scaling solution, as well as on Avalanche. And on Avalanche is notably Trader Joe Decentralized Exchange, which is a DEX on Avalanche. Users can trade a variety of digital assets on the GMX platform. And here's a quick note for those who wish to use bridges to transfer tokens from Arbitrum via the Ethereum mainnet. If you bridge tokens from Arbitrum to Ethereum, there will be a seven day waiting period during which you will not have access to your tokens, just so you are aware. Okay. Now, social media presence for GMX. Twitter, GMX has got over 88,000 followers. On Discord, GMX has got 10,700 members on its Discord. The project team, the team has chosen to remain anonymous. Mm. And on got any man on this being one of the major traditional finance players or people with links to that industry, another red flag for us. There is reference to a single former founder, but that's just about it. We don't even know whether that is credible or it's just a connection between entities with similar names. We're not sure. Now, as part of our DYO our risk evaluation, we are going to apply our 13 elements. And then once we've applied the 13 elements, we score them from 0 to 10. Once we've allocated all the 13 scores, we aggregate them to come up with a total score. The total score is then categorized in any of the following categories. If the score is from 0 to 64 out of 130, we call that no go, which means the risk is at its maximum. A score of 65 to 89 out of 130, we call that could go to zero category, which means the risk is better than the highest risk category, but there is still a lot of risk involved. The next category, we call that potential category, a project here will need to score 90 to 109 out of 130 before we finally go to the least risk category, which is go for it category. A project here will have scored 110 to 130 out of 130. So those will be the risk categories we're going to apply to GMX once we've allocated the scores in accordance with the 13 elements. And the 13 elements as follows, decentralization, security, scaling, interoperability, project team, social media via Twitter, social media via Discord, edge of the project, as well as use cases. We then look at tokens issued at project launch, as well as tokens in circulation at the point at which we are doing this video. Maximum tokens are available before we look at tokens allocated to insiders. Insiders are basically people who are closely linked with the project. How much have they been allocated? How many tokens or coins do they control? Because that does affect what happens to community holdings or individual investors holding. Now, decentralization, we gave GMX 5 points out of 10. Security, 5 points out of 10. Scaling, 7.5 points out of 10. Interoperability, 10 points out of 10, because we think GMX is designed for interoperability. Project team, it's anonymous, we gave them zero. Social media via Twitter, 7.5 points out of 10. Social media via Discord, 5 points out of 10. Edge of the project, 2.5 points out of 10. Use cases, 7.5 points out of 10, because we think GMX has got use cases in bucket log. Tokens issued at project launch, 5 points out of 10. Tokens in circulation at the point at which we are doing this video, 5 points out of 10. Maximum tokens available due to the absence of the hard cap, we are going to give them zero. Inside the token allocation, we are going to give them 5 points out of 10. So if the team were publicly available and there was a hard cap, this would have been a totally different score. Do you guys agree with our scoring here for GMX? Again, guys, let us know down below. If you are new, again, guys, don't forget to click like and subscribe as well as smash that notification bell. Anyway, the aggregate score for GMX comes up to 65 points out of 130, which puts GMX within the could go to zero category. Do you guys 
agree. Do you think this is generous or this is too harsh for GMX? From our point of view, we think the areas we highlighted, a lacking hard cap, as well as missing project team, they are not available publicly, even though we know they've got a wonderful platform and they're developing wonderful products. Why are they choosing to remain anonymous? There is a red flag there. Anyway, 65 out of 130. That is our score for GMX as far as our DYO, our risk evaluation assessment is concerned. Do you guys agree? Let us know your thoughts down below. As far as we are concerned, the crypto derivative market is still in its infancy and talk of a leading protocol or platform this early is somewhat misleading in our view. As we have already highlighted, the tradeify derivatives market exchange perpetuals worth $57 trillion in 2021 alone, a figure that was six times the previous year. As a percentage, the derivatives market makes up about 66.7% of the whole crypto market. This will likely grow exponentially in the coming years and along with it, new platforms and protocols with even better and attractive propositions and products. Can GMX carve out a front row seat for itself? The jury is still out on that front. The results from our DYO, our risk evaluation exercises, will reveal that GMX is a highly risk project to invest in, but the rewards are high as well, or the potential rewards are high. Our conclusion is that this is not a project we will AP in and be a complete degen, that is, allocating all our resources. Reasonable allocation to GMX is ideal in this case, but as an investor, this is one I would not bet my house on. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comment section. Again, guys, this is not financial advice. At a fully diluted market cap of just under a billion dollars, this could still have a lot to run if and when the market reverses and we get into another bull run. However, it just takes one of its competitors to do one thing, do one thing right, or one solid product on offer, and that's game on. Competitors such as DYDX, Perpetual Protocol, and Ribbon Finance, and a number of other centralized players will certainly have something to say just as GMX did when it took some market share from DYDX. So we should all watch this space as the crypto derivatives market develops into a growing segment of the crypto market as a whole. What does everyone think? Let us know down below. What is your favorite derivatives exchange within the crypto space? Again, let us know down below. Until next time, guys, this is fd 4 tv your host for today, highlighting the risks and the potential rewards involved in investing in GMX platform, a decentralized exchange for derivatives. Until next time, guys bye for now